let's focus on managing our settings in Google Forms. And one of the first things that you should always do after creating your Google Form is to go into settings so that you can make sure that the purpose of your form is reflected in its settings. To access these settings, you'll go to the gear at the top right hand corner of your form. At the very top, you'll notice there are three tabs, general, presentation, and quizzes. I'm going to go through each of these tabs. On the general tab, the first option you'll see is to collect email addresses. This may be helpful if you're wanting to make sure that you have the email address for all your respondents. If you choose collect email addresses, you will get an additional option, and these are response receipts. This allows the respondent to receive or request a copy of their responses. You'll notice if I select this, I can say, do I want the respondent to be able to request a copy or always receive a copy? Depending on the purpose of your form, this can be helpful if you want to remind them of their answers. However, I would caution that if you use this in the event of a quiz, that means that students would receive basically the answer key for your quizzes. So again, you have to kind of consider if you want to use this or not. The second section in the general tab focuses on purposes for signing in to take a form. So you'll notice here the default in our district is that we restrict all forms initially to our own domain. This makes it easier for teachers to not have to remember to go into this setting. But this is something that you really need to think about because if I'm making a quiz for parents, I want to be sure and deselect this option because they, are, they do not have a Henderson County Public Schools login. So you need to think about that so that you'll know whether or not to select this. Now, since mine is going to be a quiz, I am going to go ahead and restrict it so that my students have to log in to take it. Under this, you will be able to decide if you want to limit the number of times someone can fill out your form. If you choose limit to one, that means they will sign into Google and they'll be able to submit it once, but if they try to do it again, it will give them a notification that they've already taken that quiz or filled out that form. The next section is what your respondents are able to do after they submit. If you want them to be able to edit their responses right after they submit it, this is a one-time thing, you can offer this. That caveat is as soon as they submit it, there's an edit button on the confirmation page that they'll have to click edit right then. They can't return to it after they've submitted it and that confirmation page is gone. The next one is about seeing a summary of charts or other responses. This can be helpful in some circumstances. If you want them to submit it and see a summary of what others have said who've already completed the form or taken the quiz, you can select this and they can see any text responses that were entered and graphs of the responses. This can be helpful in some circumstances, probably not used very often um, with quizzes because of the text being able to see text responses. Now I'm going to go over to the presentation tab. The presentation tab has to do with how your form looks. Now you've already gone through and done your theme and chosen your colors. This is basically how it looks to the person who's taking it. This is an important one to consider, the progress bar. If your form or your quiz is very long, you may want to show a progress bar at the bottom, especially if you have used sections. Sections help break up the content of a really long form or quiz, and the progress bar will give the respondent the ability to know how much longer they have. I'm almost halfway through, I'm about 75% through. It gives them some information. So if you'd like to show that, you can click that box. That's really only super helpful if you've used sections. This one is an important one, shuffle question order. If you are doing an assessment and it doesn't matter what order your questions are in, shuffle question order means no matter how you have your questions laid out in your form or quiz, it will shuffle them around so it will look different from person to person to person. 
I like to use this one when I'm not using videos so that it can shuffle my questions around. The next option has to do with showing a link to submit another response. Currently it's grayed out and this is because on my general tab I have it set to limit to one response. If I deselect this for a minute this will show you this one. If you show them a link to submit another response this means they can fill it out multiple times. Now we found a great way to use this submit another response is if you are doing an attendance form or if you're doing a survey on a on a machine that you've left in a public area and there uh, more than one person is having to come in and log in or if a lot of people are using the same device um, this is a great way for them to be able to submit another response right away but because in the general tab I had limit to one response this was automatically grayed out for me this last one is one that a lot of people use to give information after the respondent has submitted the form. The default response is your response has been recorded. But what I like to do is provide reminders. Thanks for filling out this form. I'll be in touch with you soon. Um, for students, I like to say, um, you know, give them directions about what to do after they finished it. Um, this is a great place to put some information. Um, thanks for your input, you know, whatever it is that you want to say. Uh, what happens is as soon as they've hit it, hit submit, the confirmation page comes up and whatever confirmation message you've placed here will be placed in that spot. So this is a great place to customize that post response message. Your last tab is quizzes. For quizzes, you do have to turn on this tab in order to make it function. And this allows you to be able to give point values to questions and do some auto grading. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this a quiz because as we move forward, this is one that teachers use a lot and I'd like to be able to show you how to assign those um, point values and to turn on some auto grading. Underneath that, there are some options for the quiz. This first one is one of the newest um, elements of Google Forms, and that's locked mode. If your students use Chromebooks that are managed by the district, you can actually turn on locked mode. If you select turn on locked mode, what this does is that people who are taking your quiz are not going to be able to open other tabs or even other Chrome applications while they're taking the quiz. As soon as they click on the link to take the quiz, it opens up in its own window and kind of locks down the Chromebook. So they have to take that quiz on the Chromebook and submit it before they are allowed to have access to other applications or tabs. This can be super helpful if you're using managed Chromebooks. So if you'd like to turn that on, simply click on turn on locked mode. The student will see that before they start, their Chromebook will be locked down. The next section talks about releasing grades. This is something to really consider. Do you want to re release the grade immediately? This can be super helpful if all of your questions are auto graded, but if you have some open-ended questions, you may want to turn on later after manual review so that you can release the scores um, all at once, especially if they're open-ended questions. At the very bottom, it shows what respondents will be able to see after they've submitted their form. Do you want them to be able to see any missed questions? So you'll notice as I hover over this question mark, they're going to be able to see questions that were answered incorrectly. So it would show every question that was incorrect. Correct answers would actually show which of the answers was correct. So if you wanted to, them to know they missed a question but not which answer was correct, you can select missed questions but not correct answers. Point values actually shows the total points available for each question. So this would help the respondent be able to see which questions have more value and which questions have less value. That's just up to you whether you want them to be able to see that or not. So you can actually make some choices about what you want them to see before, during, and after they've submitted your form. With any of these form changes that you've made, you'll want to click on Save. 
Now, one of the things you'll notice is as soon as I hit save, you'll see at the top that I got um, some information here that says this form is automatically com collecting email addresses for HCPS users. And that's because of a setting that I um, selected in the settings options. You'll also see that because I chose for this to be a quiz, I now have some options for answer key and we'll go over that in more detail. So just to review, as soon as you make your form, before you even put questions in, it's really important that you go to settings and think about what you want the end to be so that your settings reflect that. Hope this has been helpful for you.